capacitance. Now, let's, I de let me define what the capacitance is. So the capacitance is defined by this ratio. The capacitance of a metal object. First of all, I have to uh, clarify that the capacitance is only defined for metals. There is no capacitance for insulators. Okay? This is definition. And the capacitance of any metal object is defined, this is definition, by its total charge divided by its potential. V, here you see, is the potential of this metal. For example, if you have a metal sphere and have a charge Q, then what is the potential of a metal sphere? If it is a radius R, then it's K times Q divided by R, right? Its total charge is Q, and its potential is K times Q divided by R. If you divide this Q and V, then you will obtain some new physical quantity, which we call the capacitance. Okay. So this new physical quantity has, of course, its own unit. And since Q is in Coulomb and V is in volt in SI unit system, we call this special ratio, Coulomb divided by volt, as farad. It is the unit of capacitance. Let me uh, calculate then the capacitance of a charged sphere. What is the uh, capacitance of a charged sphere? Again, if it, is a, if it is a charge Q and it is radius R, whether this sphere is a solid sphere or a shell doesn't matter because uh, the shell and the sphere, solid sphere, has both the same potential, right? Whether, uh, whether it is, it's uh, inside is full or empty doesn't matter uh, the potential is only depends on the radius and the charge q so its potential is q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 r this 1 over 4 pi, 4 pi epsilon 0 is just k the coulomb constant and let's calculate then this ratio q divided by v and v is already in terms of q and you will see that the capacitance is nothing but 4 pi epsilon 0 times r the capacitance of a metal sphere is just 4 pi epsilon 0 times its radius. Okay. What does this mean? The capacitance, first of all, if you look at it, grows with the radius. If you have a larger radius uh, metal sphere, you have a larger capacitance. Capacitance means the capacity of holding charge. Okay. If you have a larger object, it has the larger capacity of holding more charges, right? If it has a small charge, there's less, it will collect less charges, of course. Because if you connect to a potential that we have uh, considered in previously, in previous lecture, two different radio spheres, right? Remember, they were at both same potential, but the smaller sphere holding uh, a less charge, and the larger sphere holding a larger charge. Q2 was always larger than Q1. That's something related with the capacitance. Because the larger sphere has a larger capacitance, that means it holds a larger charge. So that's it, one thing. Uh, see, the C is grows with R. As you enlarge the sphere, then you have more capacitance. What about the Earth? Well, the Earth is not a conductor, but again, uh, if you think that the Earth's surface has some conducting material, you can calculate the capacitance of it. So in terms of its radius, its radius is 6,400 kilometers. Let's calculate the capacitance of a metal sphere in the size of an Earth, and that means 700 microfarad. See, a, an object as large as Earth, a very big object, it has 700 microfarad. Micron is 10 to the minus 6. So one farad is very, very large quantity in terms of capacitance. Okay? Just to appreciate uh, the value. And when you look at these capacitors that you can see anywhere, in, uh, in fact, we have some capacitors in our lab, just you already have seen small uh, cylindrical things beside the uh, resistors. Poşetlerin içerisinde gördünüz geçen labda küçük silindir şeyler vardı. Onlar rezistansların yanında rezistörlerin. 
Onlar kapasitör. Onların üstüne bakarsanız mikrofarad, böyle milifarad falan yazar. Yani çok büyük değil. So one farad of capacitance requires a size of sphere uh, radius having 9 times 10 to the 9 meters. 10 to 9 makes like, almost 10 to 10. It is uh, one meter meters, right? Huge. Is the uh, it's almost uh, six orders of magnitude larger than the size of Earth. It's a huge uh, quantity. So one one farad is huge number. That means one farad of capacitance can hold very very large uh, charges. <coughs> the next is. Uh, the previous one was uh, the capacitance for only one object, but we usually have the capacitors that we use in our electrical circuits. It's composed of two conductors, not only one conductor, but we have uh, as the capacitors as uh, uh, two conductors which have some distance d with respect to each other. We have one conductor A, which has positively positive charge, and the other conductor B, we call, which has negative charge. And you keep the distance fixed between them. And you keep their potential difference also fixed. With this charge, if two conductors, if two conductors have a potential difference between them, okay, then one of the conductors is positively charged and the other is negatively charged. Okay? Or, let me say more precisely, these two conductors must have different charges. Okay? Uh, but we define the capacitance of two conductors, two conducting system, if they hold a charge Q, if one of them has hold charge Q, the other must hold a charge minus Q. Okay? This is definition. A capacitor of two conductors is defined by one of the charges of the conductor, and this charge is the same for both conductors, but they are opposite in sign. If you define the capacitance of a conductor, two conductors, then one of the conductors has positively charge Q, the other has exactly the same magnitude, but opposite charge, minus Q. If they have, for example, Plus Q minus two Q, two Q, you cannot define any capacitance. Forget it. Okay, there is no such thing. We have a capacitor of two conductors. One has a different charge. Well, one has a charge in strength different than the other one. They must have the same strength of charge, and their sign must be opposite. This is always uh, must. And if you keep these two pot. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, metals having a, a potential difference. Of course, they have uh, different charges, so they must have different potential. If they have different charges in sign, they must have different potential. So we define, redefine the uh, capacitance of two uh, charges as the charge of one of the capacitor, Q, not the total charge. Well, if you, if you look at the total charge, the total charge is zero. Plus Q minus Q is zero. Just uh, on the denominator, we have the charge, the strength of the charge of the one of the capacitors, Q, divided by the potential difference between them. This is the definition of the capacitance of two metal objects. Okay? It is similar to the definition of the capacitor of a single one metal object. It's, again, Q times Q divided by the volume. But this time the uh, potential difference is the potential difference between two pieces of the conductor, okay? This conductor may have an absolute potential, some potential, and this conductor has some other absolute potential, but we don't care their absolute potential, their potential difference we care. All right. Let me uh, calculate the, an example of a capacitor of parallel plate uh, capacitor. <coughs> In parallel plate capacitor, we have two plates. 
One is positively charged and the other is negatively charged. And they both have the same area. They are metals. They are two-dimensional surfaces. They keep a distance D between them. You have to keep the distance the same between them. And let's calculate the capacitance of this object. So, of course, they have the electric field, non-zero electric field between them. It is sigma divided by epsilon zero. And to find the potential difference between the two plates, because we need a potential difference between these two conductors, you can use this formula, uh, the potential difference, the line integral E dot dr, because we already know what the E inside the, uh, this, uh, between these two plates. And from this, you can easily calculate the potential difference as E times d. d is the distance between the plates, okay? And the electric field is sigma divided by epsilon zero. So this is the potential difference, E times d. And the charge is sigma times A, right? If you apply this formula to find the capacitance, you will find sigma A divided by E D. And E can be replaced by sigma divided by epsilon zero so that we can get rid of these two sigmas in denominator and denominator. So you have A, one of the surface area of the splits, times epsilon zero, a physical quantity, it is constant, divided by the distance between the plates. So when you have two plates, metal plates, of size A area, and you keep the distance T, the capacitance grows with the size of the surface area. Of course, this is very intuitive, very logical, because if you enlarge the surface area, then the capacity to hold more charges is more, right? You get more charges with a larger surface area. So the capacitance is, you see, uh, proportional to A. But it is uh, inversely proportional with the distance between them of these two, uh, two plates. If you keep the distance smaller, if you bring these two uh, plates closer to each other, they have, the mo they have more capability of charges. Okay. You can put more charges if you bring them closer. If you make them far apart, it is more difficult to put more charges on the plates. So this is so. Uh, it depends uh, inversely proportional on the distance between them. Okay. All right. An example, if you have, for example, uh, 25 meter, uh, one side, a, a, let's say, aluminum folio, it's a metal, and uh, it has one side 5 centimeters, two aluminum folio on top of each other, if you keep the distance between them 0 0.01 millimeters, then you can reach the capacitance of one microfarad. Uh, well, this is appro approximate, I think. Okay? So one microfarad, you can have, uh, you can, uh, uh, you must have uh, 25 meters aluminum uh, plates. What you see these uh, cylindrical capacitors in the lab, in fact, they are folded aluminum folios. And in between two folios, they have a paper as insulator because they shouldn't touch each other. If they touch each other, they discharge, right? So they put a paper in between two aluminum folios and roll them up. And, and you put this into a cage, which is cylindrical. You form a capacitor.